Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I've got this really cute um, treat box for you. It's a very simple six by six base that makes just the cutest little box. You can glue the flaps down. If you've got a designer series paper that you love both sides, this is a great way to showcase both sides. Or you can close the flap and tie the box shut with the ribbon and it gives it a completely different look. We're using the Best Dress Designer Series paper for this box. It's a six by six designer series paper from Stampin' Up. It's from the spring, the um, January through June mini catalog. Six by six and we're going to start by scoring this box. It's a super simple pattern that you'll want to have in your repertoire. I've got my Simply Score tool. We're going to put the paper in. Now, if you have a directional pattern, you'll have to be careful with this the paper. So we're going to score at one inch all the way around. That's the first thing you'll do regardless of whether your pattern is directional or not. I do not have a directional pattern. So for me, I can just stop on the fourth side here. If you have a directional pattern, you want your directional pattern to be facing up when you do these next scores. So the direction would be oriented correctly into the simply scored. If your direction was off to the side, then your pattern's gonna be weird. So now we've done one inch all the way around. Now we'll do two and a half, three and a half. Super simple box. We've got a directional pattern. It's going to be important that you choose the top panels based on your directional pattern. Okay, so we've scored, work all those score lines with the bone folder. And then sometimes I find that it's easier to work from the inside when you liberate the tabs. You're going to choose the side and cut the corners out top and bottom from one side of your box. Then you're going to liberate the tabs by just cutting out the score line. Less is more here. You just want to debulk a little bit, especially if you're going to fold the tabs to the outside. You really don't want to have big angle cuts here. Okay, so we've liberated our tabs. We've got our top tabs, bottom tabs, and glue tab down the side. Let's add some tear and tape adhesive. We're going to put tear and tape adhesive, since we've got such a wide glue tab here, we're going to do a little equal sign. That'll give us a nice smooth inside and a nice tight corner on the outside. Remove the tear and tape liner. Then I like to put the inside of the box, fold the tab, and then on the second score line, not the first, but the second, fold and bring the edge of the box right to the corner. You got that. You can go ahead and burnish down. Now at this point you can identify the back of the box. It's got the seam. So we need a piece of tear and tape adhesive on the bottom front inside. This will become the bottom of our box. I'm going to fold the sides in and the back to the front and then the front to the back. You can use your bone folder from the inside to really burnish down that adhesive. At this point, if you wanted to, you could fill your treat box, close the box, and tie it up with the ribbon all the way around and then add your embellishments to the front of the box. We're going to bag our treats and do an open top bag. So to do the open top bag, let's flatten out all the tabs. And we'll take some snail adhesive and add just a little bit on each of the tabs. You don't need a lot here. A tiny dab will do ya. Then we'll fold each of those tabs out. I've got Hershey Kisses. About 12 of them will do, bagged up in a Wilton pretzel bag. 
We've also used some little foil wrapped eggs. So if you're doing this one in time for Easter, about 12 of those fit too. What you're gonna do is put your candies in to the box and kind of squish them up as you go. Then you can cut off about two inches from the top of the bag. And then these Wilton pretzel bags come with these little silver twist ties. So you can go ahead and twist those. They're a little bit long, I think, so I'll snip a bit off with my paper snips. So loose chocolate candies, about 12, fit in the box. Now I've got my ribbon here. This is the Ornate Garden Combo Pack. It's terracotta tile and old olive. And we used the old olive on this one. I'm gonna do the terracotta tile on the next one. We're gonna go for a little contrast and see how that looks. We're gonna wrap around the box, make sure that we've got about six inches of tail. We can trim that away from the spool and then just set it aside for a second because we need to stamp our tag. So I got the tag here from the Ornate Frames die set. This is um, this long skinny one from Ornate Frames and this is leftover in Holiday Favorites. This is one that carried over. We're gonna stamp the greeting in Blackberry Bliss ink. The greeting came from the Honey Bee stamp set. I love this Honey Bee stamp set with the ornate frames. Celebrate every moment, thank you, and hello all fit in this little tag. So I use these in combination all the time. I'll go ahead and stamp that right on the tag. Set it aside for a second and let it dry. Let's work on our daffodil now. I'm using the Pop-Up Petals stamp set. I've been waiting for this to come around for spring again because the Pop-Up Petals, I think, makes a really cool daffodil. I got the idea from the annual catalog where they used on an Easter card, this little flower to make a daffodil. We're gonna stamp three of them with Daffodil Delight ink on Whisper White cardstock. And the thing that you need to remember when you're using the Pop-Up Petals stamp set and the flower punch you need to watch the orientation of your punch. So the punch has a little petal at the very bottom that kicks out to the left here. We want to make sure that we put that one down when we stamp. So we're going to ink up. We're looking for that little petal that kicks out to the left and we're going to stamp three of those. All on Whisper White. And you're going to punch out your best two images. Leave the third one. So we've got that little petal that kicks out to the left. It makes it perfectly easy to line up the punch. I like these two best. I'm gonna grab my scratch paper here, protect my surface. I love the little tiny Stampin' Up! grid paper. Got a dark so saffron marker. And we're gonna color in. Doesn't have to be perfect because these are gonna get layered on top of each other, these flowers. But we want anywhere that you're gonna see underneath dimensionals to still look um, colored. And then the edges, we're going to bring in that lighter shade of yellow that just finishes it up to look like a daffodil, more like a daffodil than having the white edge. Then we gotta color the inside of the third one. And that's, you know what, I'm gonna color over the center too. All right, cut this one out with scissors. We're just gonna cut out the very center here. This will be popped up and give us that um, reminiscent of that daffodil shape. And there's the little center. Now, I want to shape my flower. The one with the center colored 
that's our top flower and I'm just rolling the petals with the bone folder giving them some shape And then multi-purpose liquid glue for the layers. We're going to add a little bit to the top layer. Make sure you're adding your glue to the one that's already colored, otherwise you're going to have to go back and color the center. And we'll add the center of the flower with a little piece of Stampin' Dimensional. i got to cut up a piece here. And we've made our little daffodil. Now we also need to give this the daffodil look by accenting the center with a little bit of pumpkin pie Stampin' Blend. So that very center will dot and then just kind of swipe, radiate out. Looks like the designer series paper now, doesn't it? Alright, our tag should be dry now. And to add the tag to the box, we're going to go left over right We'll keep the tails of the ribbon up and down. We're going to slide the tag onto the bottom. If you're having trouble, this ribbon should go fine. It's very um, soft, but if you're having trouble, you can poke it through using your Take Your Pick tool. You're going to lift straight up. Top comes over the top. Tuck the tail in, pull. Now we need a little finesse. Looking pretty good. Let's trim the rough edges. Such a pretty combination. There's with the green. This is old olive. This one's terracotta tile. And you get both of these ribbons in the new um, Ornate Garden sweet ribbon. Our last step, I've got some garden green cardstock. We're going to punch a leaf. Don't need the whole stem. But we'll add Stampin' Dimensionals to the back. Just the top leaf and then the pointy little leaf. This guy's going to go over the bow so it doesn't need the dimensionals. We want to leave that one free. All right, we want some Stampin' Dimensionals on our Daffodil too. Pop a couple of those on there. And now let's decorate our box. I like to add the flower first all the way over to the right and get the ribbon kind of threaded in there. And then the leaf, we can tuck that right up against the flower and adhere with the dimensionals. <laughs> there they are. Celebrate every moment. They're with the Hershey Kisses and the bold spring color patterns. And then we've got these little guys. Celebrate every moment. They're little foil wrapped eggs. And it's all from the Best Dressed Designer Series paper. Aren't those beautiful? Okay, if you've got any questions about the project, you can email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. And for products, you can shop 24-7, marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching.